that will work. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Pentatonic Parallel, Part 25, Micro Swells. In today's episode, we set out to add lines to the diagram and chart and score corresponding to what we called micro swells and micro lulls. And what we mean by that is uh, temp temporary uh, increases in volume and temporary changes in tempo. And we did that. And the way we tracked it was we used our line diagram and went down through it and we highlighted in yellow the places where we wanted to make little subtle emphases. So here example for bar 340. Bar 340 is insistent. And what we did for bar 340 to make it insistent was we came in here and we temporarily boosted the uh, the volume and the score just a teeny weeny little bit. And so we did that all throughout the composition where you see the yellow highlight. And that actually shows up in the energy chart. And we went ahead and wrote the word macro to show where we made these changes. And you can see we've got a bunch of subtle little bumps in in the curves where there where it says micro so they're kind of like micro transitions if you will um, so we did that we then switched gears uh, and we wanted to make a second moonlight scene to complement the sunlight scene we did last time in the animation and and see if we could start breaking the sonnet text up so instead of one monolithic block of text, uh, shift it so that it would present itself across the animation. So we, we did that. We've got, we had the sunlight scene, we have the moonlight scene, and then text one is the first part, 2A, 2B, uh, text three, and, and this is what they look like when they're all together at the same time. And we were able to make a playlist because we learned doing that in one of our earlier stream series. And for example, it starts out like this. Let's get this out of the way. Pure sun scene. And so it, it proceeds through that until you come up to 337. So let's show what happened just before 337. And then there's another switch at 609. And again, these are synchronized with uh, parts in the, in the score. And then the last transition is at 916. And we definitely had to use our line diagram with all the calculations of time. So that all got done. Our ideas for next time. We uh, we had a little issue of the, we tried to render the movie and it kept wrapping around to the beginning scene. So we think we fixed that, but we didn't have time to re-render it on stream. Uh, we could cut the text into even smaller sections so that instead of, for example, four pieces of text that 
take turns appearing on the stage, so to speak. Um, we could look for ways to scroll the text instead of flickering it, because it's pretty hard to read that. I mean, you know, it'd be, probably be easier just to leave this up the whole time for people to read if they wanted to read it. We could use a video editor and do some other kind of animation, which we've done before, where the text scrolls across the bottom, and then you look at either the MIDI animation or the, the notes. And basically, we want to keep listening and watching for areas to shape. And the key thing from today that we are tickled with is the idea of the micro swell, the micro drops, the temporary ups and downs in volume, and the micro lull, uh, slowing down, and, and micro hasten, speeding it up. And, uh, and we feel that we are learning to listen and watch and feel and think uh, in rapid succession, if not all at the same time, about what's going on with our music and the shape. So we say shape as a metaphor visually, as a metaphor orally, even as a metaphor thinking about the idea of it. And even look at the shape of this text here. It looks like uh, this rounded edge fits into the concave edge and so forth. So that's the end of this dream. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. We appreciate your uh, chat. Uh, we did have one question about what is a pentatonic parallel, and then we had a game going on. So see you next time, and as always, keep on streaming.